All right, as you guys saw from the previous video on how I'm gonna try to take this thing off, and it's not too hard. All you, you know, this light is just held on by two screws, and you have to wedge it out or pry it out. Uh, so, the type of screws that this thing has, uh, it's, it's kind of has the the star pattern. So you are gonna need that type of tool to get it out. Uh, and if you go to AutoZone and purchase yourself a small, not AutoZone, I got this from O'Reilly's, I'm sorry. But it's a really small wrench and it's, it's really useful for a lot of these projects that are really tiny. Uh, and one thing that you're also gonna need is some type of wedge. Uh, for example, on this form, I use this little kit, this little tool, it's plastic, it won't, it won't harm your paint or whatnot. And, Oh, once once you get both of the screws out, you pull it out, and you just you wedge it in to try to help you with uh, removing the light. All right, now that we have the light fixture out, uh, what we want to do is make sure we take off, obviously, all the actual bulbs in it. And it's pretty simple to do. Uh, I would suggest that you start off with the far right one. Uh, and as you guys know, um, one thing that I did notice is that these, since it's the very first time they've been taken off, um, they were a little bit tight. So you want to just press and turn in which direction the the release the, the releases are because as you guys know this is a twist and lock uh type of fixture so i would say work my way from from right to left and it'll be a lot easier as opposed to just kind of uh just starting without an order and to take this this main piece right here all you have to do is just kind of lift the latch and uh and slide it out so it's really easy And, I'm sorry about this, but what you could also do is grab some of these ordinary paper towel, hand towels that you might have lying around the kitchen and just stuff it in there. So, preferably try not to use the cheap ones that won't really absorb a lot of water. This is like the, the midpoint ones, which they're not super expensive, but they'll do the trick. And then I'll drop you more. And what I'm gonna do is just keep stuffing that. All right, once you have all, well, not all of it, but a good portion of the paper towel in there, uh, what you wanna do is just uh, grab the light, make sure you have a, grip, a, a good grip on it, and just shake it. Just trying to get that water to move inside of it and repeat the process until you get as much as you can. All right, so now that we're closer to just getting this thing repaired, I wanted to show you something really interesting that I saw here. Uh, as you can see, you can tell where that water is coming down from. So uh, all of this dirt uh, will kind of give you an idea that that's where the seal is, is, is weak. Uh, because if you can see all around it, everything else is, is pretty clean of where that seal is making a good contact. So uh, before you wipe it off, just kind of get a good understanding of where that leak might be coming through. All right. So what I did was I purchased some windshield and glass sealing. And I just pretty much fill in the gaps where that seal uh, was damaged and it was no longer holding that water. Uh, from getting inside the cabin and I know there's a million way of doing this uh, This is the the way that I went about it uh, like I said, it's It's gonna do the trick. So I hope this video helped And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it